Hello, welcome. Why don't you take a moment and read this problem, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so let's see, it says, on the axes below, sketch a possible function. All right, that's interesting. So they're saying, right, right I think possible function, I'm thinking there's more than one answer here. All right, so that gives me some freedom. Let's go to highlight that. P of X equals X minus A times X minus B times X plus C. So there's a polynomial. It's a third degree. I'm thinking, all right, well, there's an X and an X and an X. So eventually, we're going to multiply those three things, right? So I'm thinking right away, this is the third degree because I'm going to have x cubed eventually. Remember the degree, that's just the highest power of the variable in your function. So third degree means x to the third. So some kind of cubic shape. And I'm going to even sketch that out. x cubed in general looks like this, right? Something like that. And with the polynomial like this, I don't know the exact middle kind of inner behavior of it. I don't really know what's going to happen in here. It might go up and down. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. But we know the end behavior is something like a cubic. So once you have that this cubic degree, you have a cubic shape. I'm just thinking about that. It says where A and B and C are positive. Okay, so I have to remember that A, B, and C are positive. A is greater than B, and P of X has a positive Y intercept of D. Label all intercepts. Okay, we can do that, right? So oh, let's do the y-intercept first. Let's take care of that, that y-intercept d. Here's my y-axis right here, right? So if I look up the y-axis, there's got to be some positive y-intercept. So it's got to be something on this side of the y-axis, not down here. So I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to label it d. And they say label all intercepts. I don't know if they need us to label it as a point, but I'm going to label it as a point. I'm going to say it's the point 0D, right? So let's do that by pen. 0 is my x value, right? We're not going anywhere on the x-axis and D in the y-axis. All right, so A is greater than B. Now, they don't say where C is. C can be anywhere. And I'm just going to go in order, right? Let's put A right here and B right here and C over here. Let's just see, does that fit their parameters? Well, I say A, B, and C are positive. Well, X minus A is a um, essentially a factor of a polynomial, right? These are all factors. And if we think about it, we're saying that if X minus A, imagine it's a root, so it, that this equals zero. In order for that to happen, right, in order for this thing to equal zero, and, and if X minus A is zero, the whole thing is zero, what would x have to be? Well, let's solve for x. Let's add a to both sides. Add a, add a. So x equals a. So notice when we have a minus a, in fact, x ends up be equaling a positive amount. So it makes sense that I put a over here on the positive side of the axis. If we go to our next value, let's say this is b. Well, let's say um, x minus 3 or something, right? Then this would be 1, 2, 3. And b is less than a, so I can put b, let's say, at 2. I'm trying to imagine a number 2 right here. So there's b. And we're saying, well, if x minus b equals 0, if that's true, imagine this whole thing is 0, then the whole polynomial is 0, right? Because 0 times anything is 0. And that only happens when x equals b. So when x equals b, x minus b is 0 because b minus b is 0, and the whole polynomial is 0. We're right here, right at root. Okay, and then I put C down here. Does that work? Well, notice X plus C is um, our third factor right over here. X plus C. When that equals 0, the whole polynomial is 0. So I subtract C on both sides. Now, X plus C will equal 0 if X is negative C, right? Negative C plus C is 0. So if C is positive and X equals negative C, then C has to be on this side of the X axis. I'm looking at the origin right here, so on the right-hand side. So this is the shape of the roots for our polynomial, right? And now we just got to draw the thing. We draw the polynomial. So we've got a cross C, cross D, 
come down through B and down through A. Up through A, excuse me. And we're done. How did I know to do that shape? I was following the cubic shape right here. In other words, the end behavior of the function is known. As x gets really big towards positive infinity for all third degree polynomials, y keeps climbing towards positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, so we're going to the left now, y is also going to approach negative infinity. It's just like a cubic function up here. You can see, again, kind of highlight it like this, is this tail of the function and this one match the behavior here and here. So that's how I knew to go like this and not like, let's say, um, this. And that would be the answer if we had a negative y-intercept and perhaps a negative sign in front here because that would mimic the behavior of a negative cubic function like this. Right, we have the positive cubic function and negative. But if I clear all that off, you can see, again, this is exactly what we need. All right, I hope that helped.